Well, I'm Bernard Cornwell, and I spent my life writing stories. Oh, I think he's a spin-off of Hornblower, much like Star, Star Trek claims to be as well. Um, I love the Hornblower books, which I read when I was growing up, and, and I went on to read the Belitho books and the Ramage books. And it occurred to me at some point that it was very odd that there were these people earning a very good living writing stories about naval officers who fought Napoleon, and nobody had done the same for Wellington's men. So I used to haunt the bookshops looking for just that series, and eventually a little light went off in my head, and I thought, why don't you do it? So that's really how it started. The very first book was Sharp's Eagle. Um, I really wanted to start with the book that eventually became Sharp's Company, but I thought I'd better learn how to write a book before I do that story, because it's such a good story. Uh, so I began a few years before the Battle of Talavera with Sharp's Eagle, um, a book I haven't ever dared reread. Oh, the first 10 were all written before the TV series. Uh, and I mean, I never ever dreamed there would be a TV series. And even when it was proposed, I didn't believe it. I thought it just won't happen. Uh, but of course, I was delighted when it did. But I think I remember that it was the 10th book had just come out when the TV series started. I mean, usually the advice I give to people who want to do what I do is just keep going, keep doing, just trust yourself and keep going. Uh, I don't think there is any other way to do it. It's a job and you sit down every day and work eight hours. No, he's not. Um, there was an officer called Lieutenant Colonel John Ellie who began in the ranks. In fact, he was a cavalryman and was a Lieutenant Colonel at the time of Waterloo. He was at Waterloo. Um, and I based Sharp's promotions on him so that they wouldn't be too unreal. But other than that, no. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty certain that Wellington didn't much like guys like Sharp. He thought them too reckless. Uh, so I had to give him some connection with Sharp that would let him overcome that distaste. Yes, he does. Um, I mean, almost not all, but I would say 90% of the books, say 18 out of the 21, 22, I can't remember how many there are now, I think it's 22, um, are based on real events. Uh, and occasionally in between, I would let him drift off and do something ridiculous, which I made up. Um, but really, the, the books tell the story of the Peninsula War. Um, from Talavera, 1809, right through to the end. And then, of course, the, the, the grand finale at Waterloo. Well, I was never going to kill Harper off. I'm too fond of him. I mean, I was fond of Hagman and Harris, too. But when you're writing a book like Waterloo, there's got to be some horrible losses. I mean, it was a horrible battle. It was a bloodbath. Uh, one critic said that the death of Harris and Hagman uh, was the only real romantic moment in the Sharp series, which I'm not sure it's quite true, but I liked. Uh, no, I mean, it's always a difficult decision to kill off a character that you've lived with for a long time, but I'm afraid somebody had to pay the price of Waterloo, and it was them. Yes, I was. Um, in fact, they asked me very early on if I wanted to be a technical advisor, and I said no, um, because I know nothing about making television drama. Uh, the only thing I asked them was that the, gut, the cannons should recoil, which they do slightly in some of the episodes. Uh, but I visited the filming in the Ukraine, which is where they started, um, and in Turkey and in Portugal. Uh, so it was great. I mean, I visited the visited the site I would think probably four or five times and in India too I think I like all the episodes in which uh, Pete Postlethwaite appears as Obadiah Hakeswell 
so I, I'll come back to Sharp's company then. Um, and I mean, I just thought Pete Postlethwaite was quite magnificent. One of the wonderful things about having books made into TV series is a bit with all the added value that the directors and the technicians and the actors bring is, is wonderful. And I was always quite proud of Obadiah Hakesville because he was such a vile villain. But I thought that Pete Postlethwaite's depiction of him was just magnificent. Um, and I can watch that over and over. I think it was, well, it was Steven Spielberg who said that Pete Postlethwaite was the best actor he ever worked with, and that's high praise indeed. And of course, Sharp, Sean Bean as Sharp was terrific. Uh, I mean, just terrific. And to this day, when I'm writing Sharp, I hear Sean's voice. I don't hear the voice I originally heard in my head. I hear Sean's Yorkshire accent. Writing one at the moment. Um, yeah, I can't really leave him alone, or he can't leave me alone. And I'm getting very ancient, and I'm not sure I really want to start another series. And with the Uhtred Saxon tales finished, I've gone back to Sharp and really do enjoy writing him. I don't think so. Um, I mean, I'm much happier writing Sharp, and despite having lived in America for over half my life, uh, I feel more comfortable among the Brits than among the Yanks. Uh, and Sharp is quite fun to have as a companion through a working day. More fun than Starbucks, anyway. Well, the last one was Sharp's Assassin which all takes place in Paris immediately after Waterloo. Um, Waterloo was on June the 18th and the British entered Paris, I think it was July the 7th. Uh, so it was very quick. Uh, and Paris is a, a defeated and an occupied city. And it's obviously a time of great drama in France. And the title gives you a clue to what's in the book, which is that there's obviously an assassin around somewhere. What's he doing? He's trying to kill Wellington. And in the real history, there were, we know, at least two attempts on Wellington's life. And so I've used both those attempts as, if you like, the backbone of the book. No, I, I rarely think more than one book ahead and usually think about the next book while I'm writing the one I'm writing now, or whatever I'm writing. Um, whether I'll stay with Sharp after this one, I don't know yet. Uh, it's still a long way from being finished. Uh, so I think I'm being very self-indulgent by going back to Sharp, but as I said, I enjoy his company. And in this book I'm writing now, I've taken him back to the center of the Peninsula War, because he's always at his best when he's out in the Spanish countryside making life uncomfortable for the French. Not really. I hear from Jason Sulky fairly frequently, um, and I haven't seen Jason for a number of years. Uh, I ran into Sean Bean a few times immediately after the series was finished, but I haven't heard from Sean in a long, long time. So I'm afraid the answer to that really is no other than Jason. No, well, just thank you very much for taking your time and interviewing me.